Hello, hello! In this video I will show you how to connect your Raspberry Pi to a computer using only USB cable. Not an internet cable, not Wi-Fi, just regular USB cable. I will walk you through two methods, step by step. The first one where the Raspberry Pi acts as a USB gadget network card and we connect to it via SSH. The second one where we connect to it through a COM serial port. This works for Bjorn, Pondagachi and even clean Raspberry Pi OS. The setup is basically the same. Step 1. Preparing SD card. Alright, let's start with the SD card setup. When you're flashing your system using Raspberry Pi Imager, remember to note down three important things. The hostname, login and password. Also make sure SSH is enabled. That's really important. Step 2. Don't remove the SD card yet. Once the image is written, don't remove the SD card yet. You'll need to edit two files on the bot partition before you put it into the Raspberry Pi. The first one is config.txt and the second one is cmd line txt. cmd line. This file must be a single line of text. Just add this. Okay, and config.txt. At the bottom of the file, just add this. Copy and paste. Yeah, one again. OK, and save. Step 3. Insert SD card and connect via USB. Now you can safely insert the SD card into your Raspberry Pi. Next, connect the Pi to your computer using a USB cable that supports data transfer, not just charging. Also make sure you plug it into a correct USB port on the Pi. The one labeled USB, not powering. OK, step 4. Network connection in USB gadget mode. If everything is configured correctly, your Raspberry Pi should be now detected in Windows via USB network adapter. OK, let's open the terminal. I will run ping bjorn.local because this is my host name. And as you can see, I got response. That means the P is connected and online. Now let's connect to it using SSH. SSH bjorn and this IP. Of course, you can also use the hostname instead of IP address, like this. Type your password and you're in. If IPv6 is enabled on your USB network adapter, your Raspberry Pi might also get an IPv6 address. Let me show you. I will enable IPv6 in the network adapter settings. And now when I run ping again, you can see the P responding with an IPv6 address. So both IPv4 and v6 can work. Step 5. Serial com connection. The second method. Now let's move to the second method. Connection over a COM port. For this we need to modify the files again. In CMD line take step, instead of Ethernet, you will use a serial. And in config takes step, I add this line. Usually, even after editing the files, the serial connection might still not work right away. That's because Raspberry Pi OS don't automatically start a login prompt on the USB serial interface. That's where a systemd services comes in. Systemd is uh, basically the startup manager for, for Linux. It controls what services start automatically when your P bots up. So what we are going to do now is uh, creating a new systemd services and tells the system, hey, when the Raspberry Pi starts, open a terminal on the USB serial port so I can log in from my computer. And here's how to do that. Okay, on your Raspberry Pi, you can create a new file and paste this inside. And after saving the file, run this command to enable the service permanently. So it will start every time you bought the Raspberry Pi. After this, your Pi should show up in Windows as a COM devices. Once it's recognized, it, you'll see it under COM ports and something like USB serial devices. Okay, you can use any terminal program. I'm using PuTTY. And I use the same COM and speed and I don't change anything. OK, hit enter and there it is, the Raspberry Pi login prompt. You can just type your password and you're connected via serial com. And that's it. We just connected our Raspberry Pi into PC using only USB cable. 
and we did it in two different ways. A USB network device connecting via SSH and as a serial console connecting via COM. This method works perfectly with Bjorn, Pawnagachi and standard Raspberry Pi OS. If this video helped you, like, subscribe and don't miss new episodes. Of course, you can also find this tutorial on my blog. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!